Sometimes it's so much easier to walk away from it all, to stop wrestling and to think, look, I can just give in. I could just give in to my, my sin. I could give in to my, uh, my desire to, to stop walking this life towards holiness. And it is easy to walk away. And, but at the same time, I come to the conclusion of where I need God's mercy. Have I gone and done it again? Because I, I mess up just like anybody else. And I need God's mercy. But the thing is, it's a constant battle again, wanting God's mercy, wanting, re recognizing my, my human brokenness, but at the same time, the struggle to keep on the narrow path. And so this is what this, this journey is about. Have I, um, it, it's something, it's just this wrestle, not wanting to stay there, but at the same time, knowing that I need God's mercy. And in the chorus, I keep crying out to God, have mercy on me, even though I don't say the words, have mercy, recognizing my brokenness and my sinfulness. Complicated, please don't say you're giving. Accumulated, this baggage keeps me running. This baggage keeps me running. So over the years, I got to record um, seven music projects, and I, it's just incredible to think how many albums that is, because I, I, never, uh, I, I never intended to be a recording artist. I started recording, as I said, in the United Kingdom, and then um, eventually um, in, in Australia. And I recorded each of these albums uh, a story of, of where my heart has been with God and with people. I surrender to you Those dark, cold places You are my only hope Hold me close to you Let me know that you'll be there To get me through So look, this the song is about, you know, um, I, I surrender to you those dark, cold places, those, and that you are my only hope because you're the only one who knows about those dark, cold places. And you see, God loves us in this darkness. I surrender to you those dark, cold places. You are my only close to you let me know that you'll be there to get me through and so every time I sing that song I think God thank you for your mercy thank you for lifting me up thank you for helping me understand that all I need to do is lift my hand and then you'll pick me up and so this song makes me so emotional every time I sing it because it's still my prayer, as much as it is, it was the day I wrote it. And this was one of the very first songs that I ever wrote. And I, this song has been an, an incredible instrument as well to bring many people to Christ. And I had this opportunity to sing it in front of uh, over a million people and, and Pope Francis um, at, uh, at um, World Youth Day in Panama. Lord, you know that I can't give This heart, this mind and will Help me lay down my pride And surrender all to you oh, I surrender to you Those dark, cold places It was a scary moment for me, singing in front of um, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of people 
and, and, and the Pope during adoration. And I love that moment because you see, I, I, when I started singing it, it wasn't about the people. It wasn't even about the Pope, but it was about, again, me lifting my hands to Jesus and saying, God, pick me up, pick me up, I need you. I, I surrender to you, those dark, cold places, those places that nobody knows about, but you do, and you still love me in my darkness, in my brokenness. Quiero servirte con mi vida Hacer tu voluntad hasta la eternidad I surrender all I am now To proclaim your word to all the world Señor I wanted to write a song, so I got together with a, a, a co-writer, with a friend of mine, Ivan Diaz, and we wrote this song, which is called Aki Estoy, Here I Am. But it's a song about Mary. It's about, it's the, the song is all about, God, I want to say yes, as Mary did. And so this is my desire, and this is the, what this song is about. It's, um, it's called Aquí Estoy, and it's a song which speaks about um, loving Jesus, um, loving Jesus as Mary did. So I'm going to attempt to sing this because it's also in Spanish. So um, let's, let's try this. I'll sing this, a verse, and then a chorus. Servite con mi vida Hasta tu voluntad Hasta la eternidad I surrender all I am now To proclaim your word to all the world Señor, aquí estoy Vendo tu palabra Quiero decir que sí Como Maria, here I am, living for your word. I want to say yes as Mary did. And then in the verse of the song, um, later on it says this, which is a song um, of, of surrender. Here I am, Lord. I say. So this is our prayer and this is my prayer for you that you would understand that loving Jesus as Mary did is the thing that is going to make us happiest, fulfill us most, fulfill us most. Are you searching for answers? Searching for fulfillment? Searching for purpose of life?
Discover your true identity. Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Special greeting to Shalom World TV as uh, you start this uh, new ministry, uh, bringing uh, the uh, new evangelization to reality in the church. May America be with each one of you as you uh, participate in this uh, uh, wonderful apostolate of the new evangelization. And may America bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shalom World, God's own channel. Welcome to Hope Spot. The killer COVID is rampaging the world. What will be the world and the church like after this pandemic? Can faith help us in this crisis? Listen to elite experts. I was intubated and I was on a ventilator for three days and uh, Jesus rescued me. In your will, Father, if I'm going to get better, it's going to be in your will. Hope Spot. Only on your Shalom world. Mother of fear love, who always comes to my aid. Look upon me and see the snarl of knots in my life. You know very well how desperate I am and how I am bound by these knots. My powerful mother, I gave into your hands the ribbon of my life. There is no knot that you cannot entangle. My mother, through your prayers to Jesus, free us completely from all of the knots, especially of sicknesses. Oh, my mother, Hear my plea, keep me, guide me, and protect me. Mary, undoer of knots, pray for me. Amen. Are you looking for life-changing entertainment? Does what you see on most channels leave you feeling unfulfilled? Well, look no further. Shalom World TV brings the peace and joy of Jesus Christ to you, whether at home or on the go. To start watching, you don't need antennas, cable connections, or a dish. You probably already have what you need, if you have a smart TV, such as a Samsung, LG, or Panasonic, or if you have one with an Android, Opera, or Roku TV operating system. These can be found on the latest models of Sony, Toshiba, Vizio, Philips, RCA, Sharp Aquos, TCL, Insignia, Element, Itachi, Vestal, Skyworth, Chang Hong, Konka, and Hisense. You can also watch Shalom TV on most IPTV streaming devices, starting with the fourth generation of Apple TV and Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Mi Box, Amino, Humax, or on TiVo Box through the Opera TV store. Are you a gamer or virtual reality enthusiast? We've got you covered. Shalom World is on Xbox One, Razer Forge, Nvidia Shield, and HoloLens. To start watching, all you have to do is go to the App Store, download Shalom World, and start being fulfilled by content that brings you into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. For more information on how to watch Shalom World on your TVs and devices, visit us at shalomworld.org slash connected TV. Have a smartphone or tablet? Take Shalom with you wherever you go. Again, by downloading Shalom World from the App Store. If you prefer to watch from your Mac or PC, get the Shalom World desktop app. Or you can always watch from our website, shalomworld.org. And guess what? Shalom World is absolutely free on all of these platforms. Yes, free. There are no download charges and no in-store app purchases required, ever. If you're looking for life-changing entertainment, you found it. It's here waiting for you on your Shalom World.
Some days shine like the sun. Others are as dark as the ocean deep. Some days we know who we are, whose we are, and where we belong. But other days, we feel abandoned and alone. Christ's light dispels all darkness and gathers us into a community of grace. And from that grace-filled community comes Shalom Tidings. More than a magazine, Shalom Tidings is a companion pointing you to Christ. On good days and not so good days, Shalom Tidings is an antidote to despair and loneliness. Shalom Tidings is available in print and digital format. You can enjoy Shalom Tidings on the go with a free app in multiple languages. The app includes a prayer section to support you on your spiritual journey. And you can watch Shalom World through the app. Soar higher than ever before. Shalom Tidings, the gateway of hope. Humble yourselves. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Kids, it's your chance to see Super Fork. Come explore with Chris. Awesome. Joy. Where are we? And Gizmo. As they journey back in time. Come on, let's check it out. There'll be action. Quick, out of the way. Fun. And plenty of adventure. <laughs> I rebuke you. Superbook, Miracles of Jesus. Hi, I'm Amanda Markeski for Shalom World Television. I'm one of the many who love this 24-7, mission-driven family channel. The channel that brings the peace of Christ to over 375 million English-speaking people all over the world. I want to share a simple message of gratitude for your prayers and generous support. I also want to share some exciting news. We've just passed the threshold of reaching almost 3 million households our presence on social media continues to grow. We now have close to half a million Facebook followers. You already experience the difference that Shalom World makes. And you probably know that what we do is the result of your prayers and your financial support. We can't do this without you. Our 1,000 plus original programs have been made possible because you watch, you pray, and you support us so generously. But all this good news is not the full story. Television production requires creative, technical, and financial resources. Sometimes, the challenges of making ends meet seem overwhelming. When many disciples abandoned Jesus, our Lord asked Peter if he too would go. St. Peter replied, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This truth is why we're here to help share the life-giving word, Christ himself, with all the world. Shalom World continues its mission because the Holy Spirit inspires us, sustains us, and inspires you to work with us. So let me ask you, are you willing to help enrich and transform people's lives? Will you help us continue our media apostolate? Below is a link that will direct you to our donation site. There are a few options, so please find one that works best for you. If you can't donate right now, please continue to support us with your prayers. On behalf of Shalom World, thank you for helping us spread the gospel. Know that we pray for you daily, and may God bless you abundantly. 
someone who's uh, used media a lot in evangelization, so I believe in the importance of Catholic radio, Catholic TV, Catholics using the new media. Can I encourage everyone to watch Shalom TV? I think it's a great vehicle of evangelization. And God bless all of you. Shalom World, God's own channel. Father, fill your priests with the sure knowledge of your love. Open their hearts to the power and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Lead them to new depths of union with your Son. Increase in them profound faith in the sacraments they celebrate as they nourish, strengthen, and heal us. Lord Jesus, grant that these, your priests, may inspire us to strive for holiness by the power of their example as men of prayer who ponder your word and follow your will. O Mary, Mother of Christ and our Mother, guard with your maternal care these chosen ones, so dear to the heart of your Son. Intercede for our priests, that offering the sacrifice of your Son, they may be conformed more each day to the image of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Reverend Fathers, Reverend Sisters, Brothers and Sisters in Christ, good morning to everyone. The St. Thomas Hiromalabar Catholic Diocese of Chicago welcomes you all to the ordination ceremony of Deacon Thomas Pulikel. As we are aware, the current situation prevents the physical presence of many who wish to be here to witness this solemn event. But I am sure you are all watching the live streaming and praying fervently for Deacon Thomas Pulikel as he makes his lifelong commitment to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. A special thanks to Shalom TV for broadcasting this holy ceremony. We welcome our beloved bishops by singing the traditional East Syriac hymn of reception to the ecclesiastical dignitaries. By singing this hymn, we are requesting our bishops to pray for us. Let their prayers be fortress and shield for us and advocate for us in front of our Lord and King Messiah.
From the political and the Patara family, we welcome everyone to the ordination of our son, Timmy. Timmy is a very good teacher. He is a very good teacher. He is a very good teacher. Thank you for your love and your support. Please continue to keep him in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Our first meeting was at a prayer group in McAllen, Texas. He seemed like a regular guy with his oversized shirt, uh, baggy pants, and a unruly head of hair, but he would speak of spiritual and religious things in a way that I had never heard before. One of the things about Timmy is that he has a very quiet persistence in doing anything. Uh, when he was a little boy, I mean like two years old, I remember my dad one day showing him how to lift the corner of a couch. My brother spent, I think at least two or three days, just, he'll just wander there by himself, go and try to lift the couch. And finally, uh, we felt kind of bad for him and my dad <laughs> went to the couch and lifted it without Timmy seeing. And that's when he decided to stop. <laughs> He thought he uh, did it himself. My first recollection of Deacon Timmy is when I met him at uh, New Jersey for a retreat. Father Thomas Tarrell and myself were standing in the back of the church watching these young people come in. And here comes this red car with very loud playing music. And this young guy comes out of this car, you know, wearing the most baggiest pants you've ever seen with a very loose shirt that another person or two can easily fit into with the hat pointed to the side and uh, walks into the retreat hall. And we were kind of staring at him and uh, kind of explained, you know, what a specimen is this? There came a time when he needed to make a decision. And it, I believe it happened during a retreat, a two day silent retreat in New Jersey. When he, that was like a turning point for him. He decided to live his Catholic faith the way it was meant to be lived. Uh, whether it was through study classes or music classes or driving us to receive sacraments, he made daily life the instrument to help us grow closer to God. Uh, we really believed we could be saints because of him. I think he was the first one to tell us that we're all called to be saints and he convinced us um, that we could really become saints. He is one young man who did not fit into common expectation of the crowd or Jesus youth or the church. Rather, he wanted to set a path very unique to the modern young man. In the line of teachings of uh, John Paul II, where there is a deeper focus on the being and the personal being and the discovery of a young person towards the fullest dignity and potential of that person. He wanted to commit his life to poverty and he had a very different understanding of poverty. It does not mean that he had to go to some other distant place or stay there, but rather he wanted to embrace the spirit of poverty as a bride and he wanted to live in that particular spirituality. Later when Thomas Political told that he wanted to consider the life of priesthood uh, and listening to all his different aspirations, something very new and novel this thought came up in my mind. How is it possible? Because Thomas wanted to lead a life of poverty. He wanted to go after the lost generation in the universities or out in the world, which nobody has any access. 
And then looking into that existing reality, working in a migrant community, how is this possible within the structures of the Catholic Church? I still remember that conversation that I had with my brother um, when he told me that he, would, he was going to become a priest. Uh, I was driving and I had to pull over. <laughs> I was so, I was overjoyed and, and honored that God would allow a priest to come from our family. Whenever I think about the life of Thomas Pulikal, this question, how is it possible? But everything is possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. And another beautiful moment was about signing the Memorandum of Understanding uh, between Jesus Youth and the St. Thomas Sarah Malabar Catholic Diocese of Chicago. So we had a lot of discussions about various clauses involved in that. And then when, when Thomas Pulikal shared his his thoughts about serving the poor, serving the, the young people who are lost from the mainstream of the society. I think that really touched the heart of the diocesan authorities, especially Bishop Jacob Mangadi. And uh, everything was so smooth from, from that moment onwards. We're very pleased today, this very special day, that Deacon Timmy, soon to be Father Thomas Pulikal, uh, is being ordained for the Cyril Malabar Church and for the Jesus Youth Movement. Uh, Timmy, in these years, four years at St. Vincent de Paul, has been a great gift to our, our seminary. Academically, he has shown he's the valedictorian of his class. He gave a beautiful address. So Timmy has, has done an amazing job intellectually here in the seminary. But the other dimensions of priestly formation, the human, the spiritual, and the pastoral, Timmy has, has really become an amazingly well-rounded man uh, that we couldn't be more proud of. After Father Das and Father Ditto, we are going to have the third priest ordained for the mission of the Jesus Youth Movement. I met Timmy almost 18 years back, and I'm amazed in the way he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. In the past years, Timmy contributed to the growth of the movement in different ways. He was part of the International Council, and he's still a part of the international formation team. And he was the one who prepared uh, the monthly reflections almost for three years for the whole movement. One of the unique contribution he brought into the movement is the integration of the self-fact and self-discovery of a young person with a mature accompaniment of elders and families. And there was a harmony. Normally this is a contrast, it is all the power of the Holy Spirit. He had confusions, we had confusions, the diocese had confusions, the Jesus youth had confusions about how this is going to happen. But it is happening right now. So I'm so proud that now we have a priest who is in the line of Jesus Christ, the order of Melchizedek, who is becoming a blessing through the movement to the entire church and the world. Dear friends, the procession is about to begin. The principal consecrator, Bishop Mar Jacob Angadiyat, Mar Joy Alapad, the auxiliary bishop, the archdeacon, the priest and others accompany the candidate as he walks up to the madbaha or the altar carrying the priestly vestments. The choir sings the opening hymn signaling the beginning of this holy ceremony. Let us participate with devotion and diligence. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
please be seated this is the day which the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it this is the second ordination that we are witnessing this season let us raise thanks and praise to god almighty the world and of course the united states are facing a crisis of disturbing magnitude but god in his infinite mercy and love chose this time to gift us a new priest deacon thomas pulikel will be a member of the chicago sir malabar catholic diocese presbyterium but he is being ordained for jesus youth ministries as we partake prayerfully in this ceremony let us also keep in mind the pandemic affected millions around the globe god grant repose to the departed souls and heal the sick and the suffering in his unfailing compassion an ordination is a happy and joyous occasion but the current scenario demands that we do everything respecting the protocols and the spirit of the times even when we are in the midst of challenges we must say that this is a happy and blessed day for the st thomas sir malabar catholic diocese of chicago deacon thomas will receive the sacrament of priesthood from bishop mar jacob angadi the head and father of this diocese in a matter of moments born and brought up here deacon pulikel will he is fortunate to be blessed with parents who are loyal to the mother church and fervent practitioners of our faith we too are blessed to participate in this second ordination in such quick succession we remember father melvin paul mangalat and family especially at this moment dear deacon thomas pulikel we are happy to you, uh, promise you our prayers and support in your life as a priest of god the chicago siramalabar diocese has been serving her faithful meaningfully and with total commitment for two decades now she continues her faith journey with strength and vigor let's also pray for our diocese and for our bishops especially on this occasion mar jacob angadi at the bishop of st thomas sir malabar catholic diocese of chicago will be the principal consecrator on this occasion and mar joy alapad the auxiliary bishop will give the homily we express our loving gratitude to the father and head of the sir malabar church major archbishop george cardinal allen cherry for the paternal affection and concern for this diocese down the years we remember with gratitude the responsible role played by joseph and tessy pulikel deacon timmy's parents in helping him make this journey to the altar of the lord it is the prayerful life and courageous witness of parents that help children grow close to god and the church we also acknowledge the support of this his siblings marina and vinod panandottam and teresa and george embrail there are many who have definitely played their part in helping and molding deacon thomas into what he is now the seminaries the teachers formators the former pastors and father matthew punjail the current pastor and the community at divine mercy sir malabar catholic church edinburgh texas deacon timmy's home parish are gratefully remembered now let me acknowledge monsignor david troops the rector of the st vincent de paul regional seminary in boynton beach florida especially on this occasion and also reverend father john p horn the spiritual father of 
uh, Deacon Timmy, Reverend Father is present here. And Reverend Father Vinod Marathi Parambil, the vocation promoter of Deacon Thomas and the director of Jesus Youth Ministries. And Reverend Father Paul Chalisheri, the diocesan vocation promoter. They have been accompanying Deacon Timmy in his path to the altar. Dear Reverend Fathers, your hard work and prayerful support are gratefully acknowledged. A group, a special group deserves a special mention here. It is the first time that we are going to use the English version of the hymn of the priestly ordination. And it is Hector Lewis, Dr. Manoj, Marita Martin, and Chris Kamarita are behind this wonderful work. We know how much of effort must have gone into this wonderful rendering. So let me express our gratitude to this team on behalf of our diocese. And special thanks to our uh, choir team in advance. Now I invite uh, very Reverend Father Thomas Kadigapalli, Vicar General and Vicar of Martha Masliha Cathedral Church for words of welcome. Father, please. It is with a heartfelt gratitude I stand before you. Today is a special day for our cathedral and our diocese. Deacon Timmy is the fourth deacon receiving priestly ordination in our diocese, and it is second ordination ceremony in our cathedral. Deacon Timmy, congratulations. Our dear Bishop Mar Jacob Angadiath is the consecrator today. Also, we are blessed to have our auxiliary bishop Mar Joy Alapat with us. Your Excellencies, dear Alapat Pidave, dear Joy Pidave, warm wel welcome to Cathedral. We are delighted to have Reverend Father John Horn, the spiritual director at St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary in Florida, where Deacon Timmy completed his seminary studies. Dear Reverend Father, welcome to the Cathedral. We are blessed to have Reverend Fathers, Father Thomas Malavanal, Father John Kutti Pulisheri, Father George Maliakil, Father Vinod Madatiparambil, Father Paul Shalisheri, Father Anthony Tundatil, and all our dear Reverend Fathers. I welcome you all. I also welcome Deacon Timmy's parents, Joseph and Tessie Pulikil, Deacon Timmy's elder sister, Marina, and her husband, Vinod, his younger sister, Teresa, and her husband, Joe, and all family members, and all friends who are present here, I welcome you all. I also welcome all who are attending this be be beautiful ordination ceremony through live stream. Once again, I welcome you all. May God bless you all. Now I invite Reverend Father Vinod Madhati Parambil, Director of Jesus Youth Ministries, to introduce the Ordinandi. Dear brothers and sisters, my name is Father Vinod Madhati Parambil. I serve as the priest in charge of the formation of Jesus Youth Seminarians in our diocese. Today we give thanks to God for Deacon Thomas Pulikil, who will be ordained a priest of the St. Thomas Sura Marabar Catholic Diocese of Chicago and for the Jesus Youth Movement, which is a Catholic movement of pontifical status, recognized internationally by the Holy See. Deacon Thomas comes from Kulikal family, originally from Arumanur in Kerala, India. His parents are Jose and Tessie, came to the United States in 1984. He has two sisters, Marina and Teresa, both married, four nephews and one niece. Deacon Thomas is now 34 years old, he joined the seminary after studying mathematics and computer science and working as a software engineer for a few years. While working, he first felt the Lord calling him to the priesthood one day while he was attending the Holy Mass. 
He soon resigned his job and began the journey of his formation to the priesthood. He completed his master's in philosophy from Holy Apostles College and Seminary, Connecticut, graduating in 2016. Then he joined St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary in Southern Florida for his theological studies. Bishop Mar Jacob conferred upon him the minor orders of Cardoya and the subdeaconate on October 22, 2017 at his seminary. On May 12, 2019, Bishop Mar Joy ordained him to the diaconate at his home parish, Divine Mercy in Edinburgh. Today, having completed his seminary formation, he will be ordained a priest. At the beginning of his journey, Deacon Thomas felt deeply that his call was to a priestly ministry based on the specific charisms of the Jesus Youth Movement. He desired to belong fully to our diocese and to celebrate our beautiful Surah Malabar Rite. And yet he also felt particularly called to serve in the evangelistic dimension of the church's life. When he shared these desires with our Bishop Mar Jacob and Mar Joy and other leaders of the diocese, they discerned and agreed that it would be beneficial to have few priests who work primarily through the charism of Jesus' youth for the benefit of our diocese and its future, and to support the valuable mission of Jesus' youth in the church. Therefore, in June 2016, the diocese and Jesus' youth worked together to form a memorandum of understanding, enabling Jesus' youth to have Jesus' youth priest in our diocese in the hopes that this would produce wonderful fruit for the church in due time. This dream is well reflected and recognized by the Synod of the Soramalbar Church in the second session of the Synod of 2017. The fathers of our Synod made the following conclusions. Jesus Youth is a private association approved by the Apostolic See, and its activities could be encouraged in all our eparchies. Each eparchy shall see to it that there are sufficient trained priests to do ministry among Jesus' youth. It is up to each eparchy to take the policy regarding the admission of candidates and incarnation of priests destined for ministry among Jesus' youth. There are now two other Jesus' youth seminarians studying in our diocese. And around the world, there are also two Jesus' youth priests and a total of seven Jesus' youth seminarians from various dioceses. Deacon Thomas's journey with Christ began when he was a teenager. His journey will soon continue forever a priest. May God bless him. This solemn ceremony begins the very special and unique parent blessing and the profession of faith after the parental blessing. After the parental blessing, the candidate kneels before the bishop and makes the solemn promise that he will defend the faith of the church till his last breath and keep and proclaim and teach it without fault and error. And like a faithful and zealous son of the church, he will serve God and his people. He makes this promise by placing his hands on the gospel. Now I invite Joseph and Tessie Pulikel, parents of Deacon Thomas Pulikel, to impart their blessing and praise to their beloved son.
Your Excellency, I hum humbly request you to confer the order of priesthood on Deacon Thomas, who completed his priestly formation and now stands before you and appoint him to ministerial service in the church. May the Lord Jesus Christ anoint this servant and bless him. I, Thomas, unworthy as I am, profess my Catholic faith before Mar Jacob Angariath by the grace of God the Most High. Praise be to God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the firstborn of all creatures, born of the Father before all ages and not made, true God from true God, consubstantial with the Father. Through him the worlds were formed and all things were created. For the sake of us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and became man and was conceived and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and was crucified in the days of Pontius Pilate, died and was buried, and on the third day rose again as it is written. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the dead and the living. I believe in one Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. the life-giving spirit. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the remission of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I do firmly believe all that is contained in the Word of God and everything written and handed over to us through tradition and everything that has been divinely revealed through the church and has been officially defined either through the ordinary or the universal teaching authority of the church. I accept with a firm faith all the teachings on faith and morals decreed by the church. Besides, I adhere by religious assent of will and intellect the teachings which either the Roman pontiff or the college of bishops declare when they exercise the ordinary magisterium even if they do not intend to proclaim them by definitive act. I do promise that I will wholeheartedly obey the Pope, successor to Peter and the head of the Universal Church. I do promise that I will be loyal to the Major Archbishop, Mar George Allencheri, head and father of the Cyril Malabar Church, and to his successors. I do profess that I will wholeheartedly and loyally Obey Bishop Mar Jacob Angariath, Father and Bishop of our diocese, and that I will never go against his or his su successor's orders. May God the Most High be of my help, and praise be to him, and may the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ be my witness. Amen. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are dead to sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. A priest guides God's flock to heaven and he should first and foremost be free from the stains of sin. The ritual snipping of hair is unique to our tradition at the beginning of the administration of holy orders. It is an external sign which points to the sanctification of the soul by Christ. May Christ take away the burden of all your sins.
Please stand. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Peace and hope to people on earth, now, always, and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, holy, holy, thou art holy. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Angels and men sing out thy glory, holy, holy, thou art holy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, holy, holy, thou art holy. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Angels and men sing out thy glory. Holy, holy, the Lord, holy. Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord God, by your abiding mercy, strengthen us in our weakness. May we, the fallen ones, be lifted up by your grace. May your abiding mercy make us worthy to administer with a clear conscience and a pure heart the divine mysteries that dispense spiritual gifts and also to perfect them through righteous deeds. Giver of all graces, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, to the fall forever and ever. Amen. Now we recite Psalm 84. This psalm shares the deep desire in the heart of the psalmist to be in the Jerusalem church. This was the song of the Israelites as they journeyed forth. The psalm reminds us that we should believe that better is one day in God's courts than a thousand elsewhere. As each kanona begins and at the end of it, the candidate kneels down respectfully. Then we sing the hymn, How Eminent, O Priest, which depicts the high honor and uniqueness of the priestly ministry. The priest who officiates the worship of God on this earth decorates a position worthier than that of the angels. He is raised to a position higher than that of angels Gabriel and Michael, which fills the heavenly host with wonder. This hymn reminds the candidate and the whole congregation of the importance of priesthood and the priestly ministry. How lovely is thy dwelling place, O Lord of course. My soul longs, ye faints, for the cause of the Lord.
a dilling blaze or out of course. My soul longs and dear fates for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow nests for herself. Where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of course. My King and my God, bless all those who dwell in your house, ever sing in our praise. Blessed are the men whose, whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the highways to sign. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of swings, the early rain also comes into the pools. They go from strength to strength, the God of gods will be seen in sign. O Lord our host, hear my prayer, give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our seal, O God, look upon the face of your anointed. For the day I want to better than a thousand elsewhere. For the Lord God is his son and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Blessed is the man who trusts in thee. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs and did it faints for the courts of the Lord. Tasteless made by the power of the Ruha, the 
peace be with us. Lord God, clothe this worshiper who stands with outstretched hands before your holy sanctuary with the priestly mantle that you put on your faithful servants in days ancient and modern. Sanctify the servant to make peace offerings before you and without blemish day and night. Giver of all spiritual gifts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all forever. Amen. Incensing is a symbol of prayer of the faithful rising to heaven. It also signifies repentance and forgiveness of sins. Before we enter the next phase of the ordination proceedings, the Thurifer incenses, incenses the madbaha or the altar. The following him, O priest exuding holiness, reminds us of the spiritual weapon of a priest, namely justice and holiness, which will safeguard him from the blemishes and taints of the world. The candidate's earnest desire for the gift of priesthood to serve God's chosen people and to fulfill and fill the world with the joy and light of the gospel are expressed through the psalms and hymns that constitute the second canona. Let us pray that this candidate be bestowed with the gifts of strength and perseverance to discharge his duties to perfection. The priestly ministry should be discharged in utmost faith and love and remind him of the significance. During this time, the archdeacon leads the candidate to kiss the altar on the right side and the, the baptismal font where these duties are to be performed. Let us raise our hearts to the Lord and join in praying fervently. May this incense which we offer in your honor be blessed in the name of your most holy trinity. May it be pleasing to you and obtain the forgiveness of our sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Your praise shall put on justice, and the Holy One's your glory. Take care that you may not commit sin. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, from the eternity forever and ever. Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord God, anoint your servant with the oil of holiness. May your hands help and strengthen him, that he may do his priestly ministry in the church and fulfill the ministry of the divine mysteries for the spiritual growth of your worshippers. Giver of all spiritual gifts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever and ever. 
and extol your righteousness. Oil, I have anointed him. My oil shall be 
shall strengthen him, the enemy shall not outwit him, the wicked shall not humble him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. and they will exalt in your name all day long. Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord God, by your grace and compassion, shower upon this servant of his your blessings and make his hands with holiness that he may come to the ministry of your divine mysteries 
and bless the water of baptism that imbues to mortals immortality. Giver of all spiritual gifts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever and ever. The service of the priestly ordination is incorporated with the Holy Kurbana. Please stand for the praise, hymn of resurrection, Trisagion, and the readings from the Holy Bible. After the Holy Gospel, His Excellency Mar Joy Alapad, the Auxiliary Bishop of our Diocese, will give the homily. Let us participate with devotion and diligence. May this incense which we offer in your honor be blessed in the name of your most holy trinity. May it be pleasing to you and obtain the forgiveness of our sins, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord our God, when the sweet fragrance of your love wafts over us, and when our souls are enlightened with the knowledge of your truth, may we be found worthy to receive your beloved Son as he appears from heaven. May we also glorify you and praise you unceasingly in your church, crowned like a spouse with every goodness and grace. For you are the Lord and Creator of all, forever and ever. My Lord, you are truly the one who raises our bodies. You are the savior of our souls and the preserver of our lives. We are bound always to thank, adore, and glorify you, the Lord of all forever.
Let us pray, peace be with us. Glorious, mighty, immortal, and holy God, you are pleased to dwell in the holy ones. We beseech you, look upon his pardon us and show his compassion according to your nature. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please be seated and listen attentively. A reading from the book of Exodus. Bless me, my Lord. Dear God, bless you. Meanwhile, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock beyond the wilderness, he came to the mountain of God, Horeb. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him as fire flaming out of a bush. When he looked, although the bush was on fire, it was not being consumed. So Moses decided, I must turn aside to look at this remarkable sight. Why does the bush not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to look, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. God said, do not come near. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry against their taskmasters. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them up from that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now, indeed, the outcry of the Israelites have reached me, and I have seen how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Bless me, my Lord. Dear God. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness instead of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of justice, the planting of the Lord to show his glory. They shall rebuild the ancient ruins, the former wastes they shall raise up and restore the desolate cities, devastations of generation upon generation. Strangers shall stand ready to pasture your flocks. Foreigners shall be your farmers and vine dressers. You yourselves shall be called priests of the Lord. Ministers of our God, you shall be called. You shall eat with the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you will boast. Because their shame was twofold, and disgrace was proclaimed their portion, they will possess twofold in their own land. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, an everlasting covenant I will make with them. Their offspring shall be renowned among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them. They are the offspring the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice heartily in the Lord. My being exalts in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and wrapped me in a robe of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, as a bride adorns herself with jewels, as the earth brings forth its shoots and a garden makes its seeds spring up, so will the Lord God make justice spring up. And praise before all the nations. Heavens proclaim the glory of God with the hymns of the Holy Spirit and the hymns of Alleluia. Let us commemorate the priesthood of Jesus. Let us now celebrate in this altar. the Holy Spirit and the hymns of Alleluia. Let us commemorate the priesthood of Jesus. Let us now celebrate on this altar. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord our God, illumine our hearts and minds to hear and understand the sweet voice of your life-giving and divine commandments. In your mercy and grace, 
grant that they bear in us the fruits of love, hope and salvation, beneficial to our body and soul, that they we may constantly praise you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Bless me, my Lord. We pray. Bless you. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for this people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever according to, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Declared by God, High Priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, Praise be Christ our Lord. Let us stand and listen attentively to the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you. With you and with your spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, proclaimed by Saint Matthew. Glory to you, Christ our Lord. Then he summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to dry them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphys, and to this, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Jesus endowed these to all after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, 
by your demons. Without cause you have received, without cause you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts. Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and symbol as doves. Glory to you, Christ our Your Excellency, Mar Jacob Angadiet, very Reverend Fathers, Sisters, Jesus Youth Members, Parishioners of Divine Mercy Church, Edinburgh, Texas, Cathedral Parish Members, Friends and Children. Couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity to witness a similar service of priestly ordination of Father Melvin Paul here in this cathedral in which many of you had to participate online. Today we will administer another priestly ordination for Deacon Timmy Pulikin. Let us rejoice and be glad. For many months we were looking forward to celebrate this event with all solemnity, but today this sacred event is taking place here in this cathedral in a desperate situation of COVID-19 which has disturbed the entire world and has diminished all our hopes for the solemnity required for this priestly ordination. We have to be content with the limited situation because of COVID-19 and its stipulations. Once again, we are proving that coronavirus cannot stop us in the pursuit of our faith life. Deacon Timmy will be the fourth priest ordained for the Syro Malabar Diocese of Chicago, preceded by fathers Kevin, Rajiv, and Melvin. However, this ordination is going to be somewhat different from the previous ordinations. Deacon Timmy is being ordained today not only for St. Thomas Zero Malabar Diocese of Chicago, but also for the Jesus Youth Movement, which is flourishing as a binary tree in the spiritual horizon of the Catholic Church. I would like to greet all the Jesus Youth members who are participating in today's service, coming from different parts of the world and America. It is inevitable to acknowledge some of the names associ associated with the Jesus Youth Movement and Deacon Timmy. We should have had Ma Raphael Tatil, Bishop from the Eparchy of Shamshabad, India, who is the International Ecclesiastical Advisor for the Jesus Youth Movement. Bishop Tatil was supposed to deliver this homily today, but he could not be present due to the COVID-19 situation. Reverend Father Thomas Tarayil, the international priest in charge of questions pertaining to seminarians and clergy of the Jesus Youth Movement. Reverend Father Vinod Madati Parambil, the priest in charge of the formation of seminarians for the Jesus Youth Movement here in the USA. Reverend Father Paul Chaliseri, the Diocesan Director of Vocations and Formation. Mr. Manoj Sanni, the International Animator of the Jesus Youth Movement. There are many more special people that should be acknowledged today in the name of Jesus Youth Movement, but due to our time constraint, I cannot continue to acknowledge all of them, but would like to acknowledge their support of this movement. There are some individuals who have raised their eyes when they heard that 
the Jesus youth movement was going to ordain a priest for their own. These individuals may raise doubt regarding the relevance of being a priest for the Jesus youth movement, and some individuals are not familiar with the purpose of the Jesus youth movement. In order to understand what Jesus youth is, I share a little bit of its history and purpose. The major event that has taken place in the Catholic Church for the, last, for the past 60 years is the Second Vatican Council. It is qualified as the Mount Everest in the history of the Catholic Church. John W. O'Malley, on his interpretation of the Second Vatican Council, said that the best indeed, the indispensable approach to the understanding of Roman Catholicism today is through the Second Vatican Council. The Council, a true event of the Spirit, continues to guide the Catholic Church journey. It provides a magisterial and theological compass, as well as serving as the essential and fundamental Magna Carta of the Church today. The Council's reform provided a multifaceted framework for reading and receiving the new ecclesial communities. The Jesus Youth is one of such ecclesial moments that represents one of the most significant fruits of that springtime in the Church, which was foretold in the Second Vatican Council. Pope St. John Paul II, in his message to the participants of the World Congress of Ecclesial Moments and New Communities, assembled on May 27 to 30, 1998, in Rome, stated that their presence, the Jesus Youth Movement, is encouraging because it shows that this springtime is advancing and revealing the freshness of the Christian experience based on one's personal encounter with Christ. This gives rise to a renewed missionary seal. So the Jesus Youth Movement originated in India is an international Catholic movement approved by the Holy See and present in over 25 countries today. The movement invites its youth to follow a lifestyle considered to be based on the life of Jesus Christ, drawn from the spirit of the Catholic charismatic renewal and the rich traditions of the Church. This Jesus Youth Movement is rooted around six strong pillars of prayer, word of God, sacraments, fellowship, evangelization, and option for the poor. Jesus Youth Movement in America had been started before the inception of the Syro Malabar Diocese of Chicago. As a priest, Involved with the Syro Malabar community for a long time in America, I take this opportunity to acknowledge that the Jesus Youth Movement has contributed a great deal in the faith formation of the Syro Malabar Diocese in Chicago. One example is the third Syro Malabar Convention that was held in New Jersey in 2007 in which I was the director of that convention. There was a question, who would lead the youth in the, I mean, attending the, those who are attending the convention? Jesus Youth member, Marina, the sister of our deacon, Timmy Puliken, came forward and did a marvelous job with the youth, giving them hope as to how they could contribute to a diocese here in USA. There are many Jesus Youth members today enriching the diocese with their active participation in various ministries such as youth formation, catechism, teachings, vocations, 
liturgical services and more. In the name of the diocese, I thank you, Jesus Youth, for your support to the diocese. We are looking forward to your continued contributions regarding faith formation in this diocese and your support regarding the missionary endeavors entrusted to us by St. Thomas the Apostle, which are to be shared in this country and the world. I know Timmy and his family, who are very well being members of one of our communities in New Jersey. Dear Jose Pulligan and Tessie Jose, thank you for allowing your only son to be of service for the Lord. Marina and Teresa, you can be proud of your brother. As we are attending this ordination service today, I invite you all to reflect on what priesthood is and who is a priest. We live in a world where priesthood and consecrated life in the church is being challenged, questioned, criticized, and even mocked in public by the media and culture. I used to ask why this much criticism and, or attacks happen to the priests in spite of their relentless service to the church and community. We, both the priests and the faithful, must be aware of certain things regarding priesthood. There is a beautiful hymn that you heard during this service today. In Malayalam, this is one of the beautiful songs we used to sing during this service, and every priest would like to hear this song when they receive the priestly ordination. And in any event of priestly ordination, this song they would like to hear. If you don't hear this song, it will be an incomplete service, I suppose. Yatra samunnada minnu purohida ni parameta vishishta sthanam akni mayanmar divyarubigal ayadilal pudamar nidunnu engilu minnu purohida Avare yellam tulanam chedar Devigadudan maravaranim Padavigal nidaram nisarangal During this service we sang that song in English and it was like this How eminent a priest is this role today you have undertaken. Most exalted are the names of angels like Gabriel, Michael, etc. Yet, when compared to the lineage of priests this day, the angelic hosts of God in their entire splendor seem so meager in semblance. You are familiar with the Saint John Maria Vianney he is the patron saint of diocesan priests. He was born and brought up in France in a very poor family. He was very poor in materialist, materialistic perspective as well as his intellectual capacities. He joined the seminary and after the formation courses, the rector remarked, he is not fit to receive ordination because he hasn't proved anything qualifying intellectually, anything qualifying for receiving the sacrament of ordination. Then the bishop asked the rector, does he know how to recite the rosary? The rector re responded, yes, he does. Bishops stated that he was to be ordained. St. John Maria Vianney was qualified for priesthood not because of his intellectual capacity or material prosperity. It was his dedication to Christ the Good Shepherd that made him a priest. Today, the place called Ars, a small village in France, became an international pilgrim center 
because of the holiness of this simple priest, John Vianney. John Maria Vianney used to say, when I see a priest and an angel together, I will first greet the priest, then only the angels. The reason St. John Maria Vianney said this is because there is nothing greater than a priest because he is holding God in his hands. He is on the top position. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verse 13 says, Pinne avan malamogali leike kairi, Thanike ishtamullavere adateke vilichu. Our avende adateke chenu. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called out to those whom he wanted, and they came to him. Priesthood is a call from God, it is a gift. No one can claim it for himself. Letter to Hebrew chapter 5 verses 1 to 4 we read Janangalin in the Janangal Kuendi, Terenata Kapadana, Prathana Puro Hidden, Devi Kairingal Kanemi Kapadana, Papa Periharatanai, Beligalam Kaisegalam, Arpikanan Aventane, Belehin and I the Gundam, Atnerodum, Vadi the Tiverodum, Vandatra Sahadaba Tode, Perumara and Avene Kadim. Ikaranatal, Aven Janangal de Pabangal Kuendi and Napole, Sontam Pabangal Kuendium, Beli Samar Pikuan, Kadapatirikinu Akhrone Pole, Devatal, Vilke Pudigella de Arum, Soyam e Behumadi, Eted Kayella. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is best by weaknesses and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. St. Paul reminds us, Christuinde Dasan Marium, Deva Rasingalde, Kairistan Marium Aitana, Nyangale, Parigani Kendade, Kairistan Marke, Vishastada, Kudie Thiru. Thus should one regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of mysteries of God. Now it is, of course, required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. St. Paul, in the second letter to the Corinthians, says, chapter 2, chapter 4, verse 7, Ennal parmamaya shakti devatinde dana nyangal le da illa ennu velipetu thunnadine. E nidhi manpaathrangalil ana nyangal ke levichi tulladu. Nyangal ella vidathilum nyerikka pedu no engilum tagarakka pedu nillya. Vishamipi ke pedu no engilum bhaktnaasheraagu nillya. PDP ke pedu no engilum parittakta raagu nillya. Adichu vidha pedu no engilum nasipi ke pedu nillya. Eshuvinde jivan nyangal le sariretil pratishamagu nene. Avadatte maranam nyangal le lai podum sariretil samvohi kinnu. Dear Timmy, I know you from the time I ministered in New Jersey to the present. You are a talented, intelligent, gifted young man. You decided to sacrifice your prestigious job in the IT field and joined to be an IT man for the Lord, which is an adventurous example shown to this crazy world. Thank you for choosing to become a priest. Bishop Jacob Angadiat, myself, and all priests and faithful of the entire diocese Rejoice with you today. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the priestly koinonia communion of St. Thomas Zero Malabar Eparchy of Chicago. We appreciate your perseverance. Be confident that God continues to work in and through you to make a change in this world. Be grateful that God will use you to save his people from their sins 
and bring them to eternal life. Be joyful that each time you offer the sacrifice of Christ, the world will be transformed. The Lord who transforms bread and wine into his body and um, trans um, will transform you and your people and the entire world by offering the Holy Mass daily. Be hopeful, for Jesus Christ has overcome the world and has called you to live in this light and to love with his merciful heart. Be prepared always. The days are coming when great famine upon the land is coming. No hunger or for bread or thirst for water, but for hearing the word of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea, wander to and fro, from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. You have made history being ordained as the first priest of the Jesus Youth Movement in America. A great nation is waiting your service. We live in a nation of great material success and scientific self-assurance, but where the inner life is withering away, where private spiritualities replace communities of real faith, and loneliness is now the daily routine of millions of people. America is a mission territory, whether we recognize it or not. Whether we do our ministry in New York, Chicago, Houston, San Francisco, Denver, or elsewhere, we need a new Pentecost. We need to be priests who are men of prayer, men of courage, men for others, men anchored in the sacramental life of the church. We need to be priests who will spark not a new clericalism, but a new friendship, new equality, new cooperation, and a new fire from every vocation and form of discipleship in the church. Jesus asked Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Timmy, you may always be ready to say, yes, Lord, you know everything. Congratulations to me. God bless you. Let us stand and pray with joy and exultation, saying, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Savior and guardian and the provider of all things, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. For peace, unity, and stability of the world and all the churches, we pray to you. Lord, Lord have mercy on us. For the well-being of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the head of the Universal Church, the Major Archbishop, Mar George, the head and father of our Cyril Malabar Church, the Father and Bishop of our Diocese, Mar Jacob, Bishop Mar Joy, and for all other bishops and, and other fellow ministers, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, you heal the sick and console the sad and the afflicted. We beseech you to have mercy on those suffering from the coronavirus attack. We entrust to you the affected and their families and all medical professionals and the health workers who seek to heal and help. We pray that the scientists and researchers be granted the grace to find appropriate remedies to contain and conquer this epidemic so that the world will be free of this affliction. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Let us pray for this candidate, saying, Lord, have mercy on this brother. 
that he may denying himself and taking up the cross follow you daily and love you fervently above all things that he may by the celibate life consecrate himself fully to you and by imitating you who made yourself poor live a simple life that he may, being loyal to the Pope and the bishops, fulfill ecclesial ministry and bear witness to you in this whole world. That he may live fraternal charity, the law of your disciples, and learn from you, meek and humble of heart. Lord, that he may sacrifice himself for the flock, like you, the Good Shepherd, and give your life plentifully to all. Lord, that he may feel privileged in proclaiming the crucified Lord and in spreading the light of the gospel to the whole world. Lord, that he may, by becoming all things to all, win all for you, and live a life that is not of the world, though in the world. Lord, have mercy on this brother. That he may seek out the lost sheep, and bring to you those that do not belong to your flock. Lord, have mercy on this brother. That he may be a good Samaritan to the afflicted, and the sorrowing, and liberate those who suffer from poverty and injustice. Lord, have mercy on this brother. That he may rejoice in his sufferings for your sake, and love your own in this world to the end. Lord, have mercy on this brother. Let us commend ourselves and one another to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord God, receive the praise we offer to you for this brother. May you be a lamp to his feet and a light to his path. Grant him the grace to find joy in the priestly ministry and remain faithful to you to the end. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all forever and ever. To thee I lift up my eyes, O thou who art enthroned in the heavens. Lord, shower your grace upon this land. Lord, shower your grace upon this land. Behold, as the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So I look to the Lord our God, to be a mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of condemned. To love our soul has conceded with the scorn of those who are at ease, the contempt of the proud. Lord, shower your grace upon this servant. Lord, shower your grace upon this servant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, from eternity, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, shower your grace upon this servant. Lord, shower your grace upon this servant. To you I lift up my eyes, for you who are enthroned in the heavens. 
Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord God, pour out the plenitude of your mercies and inexhaustible gifts upon this worshiper who intensely desires for your divine gifts. Enable him to render service at your holy altar. Strengthen him to make the people redeemed by your cross, hear the voice of your praises, and to make known your wonders to the flock marked with your life-giving seal. Giver of all spiritual gifts, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever and ever. Amen. The prayers after the hymn of Holy Spirit constitute the Kudasha part of the ordination. The first prayer is for the celebrant himself, as he requests grace to fulfill this holy rite. The second prayer is the first Hamida, the first imposition of hands. The second prayer of imposition of hands is a very significant prayer in this order. The first part is anamnesis, prayer of remembrance. This is followed by epiclesis, where the celebrant prays for the candidate that through the descent of the Holy Spirit, he receives talents needed for his ministry. Through these prayers of imposition of hands, the candidate will be ordained a priest. A new priest will be born in the Catholic Church. Please remember that this is a moment of intense prayer. Now the choir sings the following hymn, which is a prayer to the Holy Spirit to descend on this candidate now and consecrate him a priest. The congregation prays to the Holy Spirit to come down on him so that he may be strengthened to give them the gift of the gospel and to offer his life as a loving sacrifice to his Lord and Master. Let us all kneel down and raise our eyes and hearts to heaven in prayer. Oh, descend. 
Let us pray, peace be with us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that takes away all imperfection with the blessing of God the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit be always upon us. May he fulfill this house and supply and service for our redemption through my weak and unworthy hands, now, always, and forever and ever. Amen. Peace.
is be with us. Glory to our mercy, King of all mercies, Lord of all blessings, for in the full mercy, ye have called the day as the age of divine gifts to dispense the talents of sacred service to the ministries of your holy mystery in your church. Lord, we present here before you this, your servant to become the justice priest in your holy church through the imposition of hands, the priestly ministry handed down to us by the apostolic tradition. By the coming down of the gift of the Holy Spirit upon him, may he be made perfect for the exercise of the ministry and present to him by the blessings and mercy of your holy begotten Son. We offer you peace and honor, worship and thanksgiving, now, always, and forever, and ever. Amen. Raise your eyes to the heights above. Implore blessings from the merciful God. Pray for Deacon Thomas, designated to be ordained a priest in the Church of God. Lord Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, and all that is, you chose the Holy Church and appointed therein prophets, apostles, teachers and priests for the fullness of saints, exercise of the ministry, and for the building up of the church. Lord, God of course, King of the whole universe, look favorably upon this, your servant, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and by a holy election, set apart and accept this servant. Grant him the grace to proclaim the word of truth, Lord Almighty God, raise him to the priesthood to lay hands on the sick that they may be healed, to minister with a sincere heart and a clear conscience in your holy sanctuary by offering prayers and sacrifices of thanksgiving in the church to bless by the power of your mercy the baptismal font of forgiveness of sin for the mystical birth of the people all to share in your adopted sonship to give your people forgiveness of sin, to bless marriages in the name of the church, to adorn for the glory of your holy name the children of the holy church with virtues, to be cheerful in the world to come as reward for his unblemished ministry before your holy presence before the awesome throne of your glory to stand hopefully by the grace and blessings of your only begotten Son. We offer you praise and honor, worship and thanksgiving, now, always, and forever and ever. Now the candidate approached the celebrant who adjusts the position of Urara or stall, symbolizing ministerial priesthood. Then having clothed him with sandhi, the bishop puts kapa on him. This holy vestment points to the fact that the priest serves for Christ, representing Christ. The bishop hands over the gospel to the new priest, and it points to the duty of the priest to proclaim the word of God, which is the source of strength of a priest and a law of his life. After giving the vestments and handing over the gospel, the celebrant blessed the new priest and the indelible seal of priesthood is imprinted on him and he is declared to be separated, sanctified and completed and perfected for the service of the church. He then congratulates the new priest who in turn kneels in front of the celebrant, showing his respect and grateful reverence for raising him to priesthood.
May God, our Lord, clothe you forever with the mantle of righteousness, that you may please Him all your life with purity, fervor, and holiness. Amen. Proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. May Jesus in the gospel be the source of all your strength, and his gospel, the law of your life. Amen. For the service of priestly ministry in the church, Thomas Pellegrin is separated, purified, sanctified, and perfected forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in the truth. Oh, 
upon this people, mercy and blessings never decreasing, unceasing from your treasury. We know, Lord of all, that you are the one who saved us from sin, that you May Christ, who has received you for his ministry, make you perfect forever in service of justice. The fraternity of priests now greet and congratulate the new priests and express their solidarity and support. The priests of this diocese who are present here represent all priests serving in this diocese. I invite you, dear fathers, to the altar of the Madhbaha to wish the new priest. You may greet him with uh, the traditional Indian Namaste.
Now the holy kurbana continues. Let us all join with the grateful hearts, thanking the Lord for the gift of a new priest to the church, and request God for the graces that each of us needs. God bless us. Bless us, O Lord, brothers and sisters. Bow your heads for the imposition of hands and receive the blessing. Lord our God, extend your merciful right hand over the universal and apostolic church. Protect it from every danger, visible and invisible. In your compassion, make us worthy to minister in your presence with devotion, diligence, and purity. Merciful God, bless us. Grant that all of us as one body may properly please you throughout our lives by works of justice that reconcile us with you. Make us worthy to offer you never-ending praise, homage, thanksgiving, and adoration. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all forever. Amen. Let all who have been baptized and sealed with the sign of life participate in these holy mysteries attentively and devotedly. In the Lord, I put my firm trust. Here is our Lord's precious body. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, let there be the commemoration of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph the Righteous at this holy altar. Let the people of God proclaim Amen, Amen. Let us celebrate at this altar the memory of our Father in faith. Saint Thomas the Apostle, together with the just who have triumphed and the martyrs who have been crowned in glory. The mighty Lord is with us, our King is with us, our God is with us, our King is with us. Lord Jacob is our help. All the departed, the little in company with the great, sleep in you, in the hope that through your glorious resurrection, you will raise them again in glory. Open your hearts before him by prayer, fasting, and penance. Let us find favor with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. 
Creator of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the firstborn of all creatures, born of the Father before all ages, and not made true God and true God, consubstantial with His Father. Through Him the world was formed, and all things were created. For the sake of us men, and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and became incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and became man, and was conceived and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and was crucified, in the days of Pontius Pilate, died and was buried, and on the third day was again, as it is written, He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of His Father. He will come again to judge the dead of living. We believe in one Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, and the Son, and the life-giving Spirit. We believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, we confess the baptism for the remission of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. May God, the Lord of all, strengthen you to sing his praises. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Let us pray for the memory of our fathers, patriarchs, bishops, for all the priests, deacons, young men and virgins, our parents, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. Let us remember all the rulers who love Christ and are faithful to him and all who departed from this world in true faith through the grace of Christ. May the sacrifice obtained for us help, salvation, and life everlasting in the kingdom of heaven. Bless, O oh Lord. Pray for me, brothers and sisters, that this kurbana may be fulfilled through my hands. May God, the Lord of all, strengthen you to fulfill His will. May He accept this kurbana and be pleased with the sacrifice you offer for yourself, for us, and for the whole world. Amen. Lord our God, we thank you for the abundant graces you have showered on us. For though we are sinful and weak, through your infinite mercy, you have made us worthy to be ministers of the sacred mysteries of the body and blood of your anointed one. We implore you to strengthen us to celebrate with deep love and true faith these gifts that you have given us. We offer you praise and honor, worship and thanksgiving, now, always and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, give peace to one another in the love of Christ. Let us thank the Lord and entreat with pure and contrite hearts. Let us stand with due reverence and be attentive to the awe-inspiring mysteries being celebrated here. The priest is imploring that peace may flourish through his intercession. Bowing our heads, let us lift up our thoughts to heaven and pray fervently and devotedly in your hearts. Peace be with us. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now, always, and forever. Let your minds be on high towards you, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, O glorious King. The 
Kurbana is offered to God, the Lord of all. It is I and just. Peace be with us. Lord of all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the adorable name of your most blessed Trinity is worthy of honor from every mouth, thanksgiving from every tongue, and praise from every creature. For in your great kindness you created the world and everything in it, and showed humanity your immense mercy. Multitudes of heavenly hosts and thousands upon thousands of holy angels and hosts of spiritual ministers of fire and spirit bow down and adore you, O Most High. And they glorify your name and offer you worship together with the holy cherubim and seraphim. Praising you with a loud voice unceasingly, they proclaim in one voice. Together with the heavenly hosts, we give you thanks. We glorify and bless God the Word, hidden offspring from your bosom. He is your own likeness and splendor and the image of your own being. Setting aside his equality with you, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Born of a woman, he became a complete human being with a rational, intelligent, and immortal soul and a mortal body. He subjected himself to the law in order to redeem those who are under the law. He left for us the memorial of our salvation, this redemptive mystery which we now offer before you. Lord our God, we commemorate the passion of your beloved Son as he taught us. On the night he was handed over, Jesus took bread, lifted up his eyes to heaven, to you the adorable Father, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Take this, all of you, and eat it. Amen. Likewise, taking the cup, he gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. Whenever you gather together in my name, do this in memory of me. Lord, as you have commanded us, we, your humble, weak, and distressed servants, are gathered together in your presence. You have showered upon us such great blessings for which we can never thank you enough. To make us share in your divine life, you assumed our human nature, restored us from our fallen state, and brought us from death to life eternal. Forgiving our debts, you sanctified us sinners, enlightened our minds, defeated our enemies, and glorified our frail nature by your immense grace. We give you glory and honor, thanksgiving and adoration for all your favors and graces you have granted us, now, always, and forever. Amen. 
your hearts, peace be with us. For the Supreme Pontiff in Rome, Pope Mar Francis, the ruler and head of the Universal Church, for the Major Archbishop Mar George Allen Cherry, the father and head of our church, for the Bishop Mar Jacob, the father and head of our diocese, for Mar Joy, for all bishops, for the entire Holy Catholic Church, for priests, consecrated men and women, lay leaders, rulers, and all those who are in authority. Lord, mighty God, receive this kurbana. Lord, graciously receive this kurbana. For the honor and glory of all the prophets, disciples, martyrs, confessors, and all the just and holy fathers who have found favor in your presence, Lord, receive this kurbana. Lord, graciously receive this kurbana. For all those who suffer and are in distress, the poor and the oppressed, the sick and the afflicted, for all those who have departed from us in your name, for this your people who await your mercy with great hope, and for me, your unworthy servant, Lord, receive this kurbana. Lord, we just receive this kurbana. Lord our God, as you have taught us, we offer you the body and blood of your anointed one on this pure and holy altar. May we invoke in this memorial celebration the sacred memory of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and of the just and holy fathers who found favor in your presence through your infinite mercy. Grant us your peace and tranquility all the days of our lives. Let all the people on earth know that you alone are the true God, the Father, and that you sent your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. May all the people know that Christ, our Lord and God, in his life-giving gospel, came and taught us the way of purity and sanctity of the prophets and apostles, martyrs and confessors, doctors and bishops, priests and deacons, and all the children of the Holy Catholic Church who have been signed with the living and life-giving seal of baptism. Lord, we, your humble, weak, and distressed servants, having received your example from generation to generation, have come together in your name and stand in your holy presence rejoicing and glorifying. We commemorate and celebrate these great, awesome, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries of the passion, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray in silence and reverence. Peace be with us. Lord our God, may your Holy Spirit descend on this kurbana. May he dwell on this kurbana of your servants and bless and sanctify it. May this kurbana grant us remission of our debts, forgiveness of our sins, great hope in the resurrection of the dead, and new life in your heavenly kingdom with all those who have found favor in your presence. Lord our God, we offer you unending praise for your glorious and ineffable plan for our salvation. We offer you thanksgiving with joy and hope in your church, redeemed by the precious blood of your anointed one. We offer glory and honor, thanksgiving and worship to your living, holy, and life-giving name, now, always, and forever. Amen. O Christ, you are the peace of the heavenly court and the hope of the earthly beings. Bring peace and harmony to the world, especially to the Holy Catholic Church. Preserve the Church and the nation in harmony. Banish wars from the face of the earth, scatter the warmongers from our midst. Grant that we may lead a humble and God-fearing life in peace and tranquility. Let there be glory, not for us, Lord, but for your holy name. Have mercy on me, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, wipe away my sins. Bless us, O Lord. May your mercy draw us near to these glorious, sacred, life-giving, and divine mysteries, though truly we are unworthy. O 
O Lord Jesus Christ, may there be glory to your name and worship to your majesty forever. For this living and life-giving bread has come down from heaven and gives life to the whole world. Whoever eats this bread will not die, but will receive remission of sins, attain salvation, and live forever. I am the living bread that comes from heaven. Justice for us. Passion and Lord, who calls sinners to your presence and opens the doors for repentance, may we enter into your presence and sing your praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now, always, and forever. Amen. Let us approach the mysteries of the precious body and blood of our Savior with reverence and respect. With hope arising from repentance, let us turn away from wrongdoing, repent of our sins, and forgive the trespasses of our brothers and sisters. Let us pray to God, the Lord of all, for mercy and forgiveness. Lord, forgive the sins and offenses of your servants. Let us cleanse our hearts, turning away from dissensions and conflicts. Lord, forgive the sins and offenses of your servants. Let us free our souls from enmity and hatred. Lord, forgive the sins and offenses of your servants. Let us receive the Holy Kurbana and be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive the sins and offenses of your servants. Let us receive these sacred mysteries in peace and unity with one another. Lord, forgive the sins and offenses of your servants. O Lord, may these sacred mysteries be for the resurrection of our bodies and the salvation of our souls. May they be the source of life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Lord our God, in your mercy, forgive the sins and offenses of your servants. Sanctify our lips to praise you, O Most High, together with all the saints in the kingdom of heaven. Lord our God, make us worthy to be in your presence with confidence you have mercifully bestowed on us. Enable us to stand in your presence with cheerful face and pure hearts. Calling, calling upon you together, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, fullness of all goodness, our merciful Father, we entreat you for your mercy. Do not lead us to temptation. Deliver us from the evil one and his host. For yours is the kingdom, the might, the power, and the dominion in heaven and on earth, now, always, and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. With, with you and with your spirit. Holy Kurbana is for the holy people. God 
Praise the living God. Let there be eternal praise to the church. Let his blessings and mercy be on us at all times. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us life, be made perfect in us through his mercy. Always and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Church invites you to receive the body and blood of the Son of God with faith in the heavenly kingdom.
every knee will bow, every tongue will shout, all oh, glory to Jesus alone. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our God. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes. Let the holy body and the precious blood that we have received not result in our judgment and condemnation. Rather, may they obtain for us the remission of our debts, forgiveness of our sins, and fulfillment in your presence, Lord of all forever. glorify God through the grace of the Holy Spirit and give thanks to him, the giver of all gifts, for counting us worthy to approach the holy altar and to participate in these glorious, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries. Lord our God, be patient for this wonderful gift. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Lord our God, may you be praised by the heavenly host honored by those on earth, and worshiped and glorified by all that you have created. You are the one who is the cause of our existence and who enriches our human race. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, sanctify our conscience and strengthen our weak selves that we may minister before you all our life with the purity and holiness, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all forever. Amen.
victorious of the victorious cross. May the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother, the intercession of St. Joseph and, and John the Baptist be always with us. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever and ever. infinite mercy, make you perfect, may he strengthen you to govern his household in a worthy manner. May your heart, stamped with the sublime seal of priesthood, be always protected in holiness. May he enable you to serve all in his household according to his will. May he, when you have multiplied the given talents, set you master over them in his second coming. May he bless your parents and all who helped you discern the call to priesthood. May the good God fill with his gift of graces all who participated in today's sacred services now, always, forever and ever. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, what a joy we have, and all praise and glory to him, the Lord. Pope Benedict said once, the priesthood then is not simply an office, but a sacrament. God makes use of us poor men in order to be, through us, present to all men and women and to act on their behalf. This audacity of God, who entrusts himself to human beings, who, conscious of their weaknesses, nonetheless considers men capable of acting and being present in his stead. This audacity of God is a true grandeur concealed in the word priesthood. So now we have such a priest with all the grandeur of God's love. Let us praise him. May I invite all of you, dear brothers and sisters, to listen to a few people recognizing and appreciating this true grandeur of priesthood in the person of Thomas Pulikal. And we all know that a priest is always addressed as a father because he experienced the love of his, the, the father primarily in his earthly father. And again, it is nourished and dignified by our spiritual father, and it is his Excellency, Mar Jacob Pangadiyat. May I invite His Excellency, the Bishop of the St. Thomas Ceremonial Catholic Diocese of Chicago, 
to share his message of joy to his son. Deva gracias. Thanks be to God. One more new place in our diocese, in the Sri Ramanabal Church, in the Catholic Church, in the Jesus Youth International Movement. Dear Our Father Thomas Polico, welcome to the Presbyterate of St. Thomas, Sri Ramanabal Catholic Diocese of Chicago. You are the fourth priest ordained here in UCM for this diocese and the first priest for the Ministry of Jesus Youth International. Congratulations. Okay. As we have been attending the ordination ceremony, we have heard the songs and prayers presenting the beauty and glory of priesthood. In his homily, Bishop Joy has sang a beautiful stanza, glorifying the priesthood, as we all sang in English. How eminent a priest is this role today you are undertaken. Heavenly ministries of fire and spirit are struck with wonder and awe. This is from the first canon of prayers. In the second canon, we sing and pray, O Jesus, eternal priest, let your glory radiate upon this priest so that he may rightly fulfill all his duties. In the hymn to the Holy Spirit, we have been praying, Grace the servants be implored, let him offer kurbanya, let him raise your people in virtue, May he become love through sacrifice. This is the guiding principle recited by the bishop at the presentation of the Holy Gospel. May Jesus in the Gospel be the source of all your strength and his Gospel the law of your life. Father well, Thomas Bullikil, I need to add anything further. And this is my message to you on your day of priestly ordination. We celebrated the Holy Kurbana in great thanksgiving to the Lord Almighty for this wonderful gift of holy priesthood to our beloved Timmy Pelikala. Let us be grateful to our Blessed Mother, Mary, Mother of God, the Queen of Priests. We are grateful to St. Joseph and St. Thomas, our Father in Faith, and all our saints for their inspiration and intercession. St. Thomas, the Roman world dies, Diocese of Chicago, he is thankful to the political family for the total offering of Timmy to become a priest in our diocese and to be at the service of Jesus Youth International. Dear Joseph and Tessie, the beloved parents, Marina and Teresa, the beloved sisters, thank you very much for your wonderful gift to the church and may God bless you all. Divine Mercy, Sierra Marburg Catholic Parish in Edinburgh, Texas is Father Pelical's home parish. Next Sunday, he'll be celebrating his first match at, the, at his home parish. The whole parish is rejoicing today with all excitement. Round Fathers Sirik Palachanath, Rafael Mbaren, Wilson Gandagiri, and the present pastor, Father Matthew Punchil, are duly acknowledged and appreciated for their support to, to me to become a priest 
in our relations in the church. Father Bligel is a priest of St. Thomas the Roman Catholic Diocese of Chicago, but his ministry will be shared with Jesus Youth International. We are grateful to Jesus Youth International for all their support, especially promoting Father Timmy to become a priest. St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary, Boynton Beach, Florida, deserves special thanks and appreciation. Monsignor David Tubbs and all staff members are gratefully acknowledged for their wonderful service rendered to Father Timmy Pligal and to all other seminarians of the regional seminary. We have two other seminarians also at the St. Vincent Seminary, Matthew Jacob and Joseph Stiger. They are also here. Representing the seminary, Father John Ho is here today. He is the spiritual father of the seminary and a spiritual father and a guide to Father Thomas Pulikil. Thank you, Father John Ho, for being here for this celebration. I really appreciate our own seminarians assisting at the liturgy and choir. Our Lysis and Guria members are to be appreciated for all their support to all our seminarians, particularly to our beloved new priest, Father Plikil, Bishop Joy Alapaj, the Vicar Generals, Father Thomas Karipalil and Father Thomas Molovenel, Chancellor, Father John Kutte Polisiril, and Procreator, Father George Malikil. Round Fathers Vinod Malati Pramil and Paul Charlie Sheryl deserve special recognition and appreciation. Father Vinod was our Youth Director and Vocation Promoter, and he is the license for Jesus Youth even now. He is in charge, is priest in charge of the vocation for seminary candidates for priesthood here in America. And Father Paul, as we all know, is fully committed to his present as assignment, being the youth director and vocation director and promoter. And we are really grateful to both of these priests for their committed service to the diocese, the whole church. Our present choir deserves special applause. They have come from far and near, beautiful singing, everything in English. Mr. Hector from Houston and Dr. Manoj from Philadelphia have been behind the lyrics and music and they have been very supportive of this queer performance. And also, they are also fully involved in the Jesus activities. And also, Sindhu and Sunil, they are here. They are also very instrumental in promoting the growth of Jesus Youth here in America. And their, their family is fully committed to the cause of Jesus Youth, but through the Jesus Youth for the growth of our church. Shadow Media is our sole agent for live broadcasting of this whole event. There are so many watching this program from long distances. It is made possible through the Shalom world. And recently they have received a special recognition, the Gabriel Award given by the Press Association of America, Catholic Press Association of America, as the best Catholic English channel and so the we all need to appreciate and congratulate Shalom World and Shalom Media. So also special thanks to our Maltomasia Cathedral here, Father Thomas Karipalil, the vicar, and Father Kevin Malegal, our assistant vicar, Raul Sisters, the Kaikarians, parish council members, and all our parishes have been great help and supportive 
for this big event. And we are grateful to the whole parish. Dear friends, the whole world is under the threat of coronavirus. Due to this, we had to avoid all external celebration aspects. And so we have very limited services here. Of course, some sacramental part, it is fully done. Now let us please remember the victims of this virus all through the world. Especially remember the healthcare workers who are facing challenges in their day-to-day -day duties. And let us pray for all of our faithful everywhere that the Lord may take care of them, protect them from this virus and strengthen them to go forward. Father Thomas Polygill, once again my congratulations. May the eternal peace and good shepherd bless you to be a holy and learned priest at the service of the people of God. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Vidali. Ecclesial movements are described as the wings of the Holy Father for the cause of evangelization and renewal. And Jesus' youth is an ecclesial movement. And the Mother Church always accompanies, inspires, empowers, and corrects the movements by providing pastors and ecclesiastical advisors. So may I invite His Excellency Mar Raphael Tadil, Bishop of the Parque of Shamshabad. He is ecclesiastical advisor of Jesus' youth. His Excellency will address us via the following video message. My dear brother bishops, Jacob Agahariath, Joy Alapart, Reverend Fathers, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, Reverend Father Timmy, your parents, Joseph and Tissy, I feel very much delighted to greet you as a priest and felicitate you as a priest of the church and of the people. Please accept my hearty congratulations. I promise my prayers for the fruitful and effective and most affectionate priestly ministry for the glory of God and for the salvation of the souls. Recently I happened to listen your speech during the graduation ceremony in St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary. Maybe from the background of your maths and computer knowledge, you compared priesthood more than an explosion of an atom. You quoted the famous definition of Einstein's and said the splitting of atom is power, big power, and you compared it. Priesthood is the splitting of love, and love shall be an explosion for the glory of God and for the good of the people. You have discerned your vocation through Jesus Youth Movement. You have been the member of the International Council for a long time. You have been also the National Coordinator for the United States of America. You have vast experience in the Jesus Youth Movement. And I would like to tell you, you shall be 
a priest for the youngsters. The dictum and definition of the moment is a missionary moment at the, ser at the service of the church. And I request you to be a missionary in search of the youngsters. The church badly needs the presence of youngsters in the church and your ministry shall be to capture the lost sheep. You shall bring back all the youngsters to the fold of Christ and the church. Dear to me, I wish you every best. May God bless you. Jesus entrusted John to the hands of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It is symbolic. Every priest has a mother, the mother of Jesus. You should always remain close to the mother so that you will be always empowered through with the gifts, fruits and grace. We will be with you with our prayers, with our support, with our cooperation. May God bless you to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tatil Pedavi, for your beautiful message. We all are experiencing the presence of your paternal heart with us. And of course, the true beauty of a priest is the quality of his heart. And the interior formation is the mold where a holy man is made. And we have here Father John Horn, the spiritual director of Deacon, uh, Father Thomas Polygal uh, at St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary. Welcome, Father. Father Thomas, it has a nice ring to it. It's really an honor on behalf of our beloved brother and mutual father, Monsignor Toops, on behalf of our colleagues, our faculty colleagues, on behalf of our beloved staff at St. Vincent de Paul Seminary and the, seminaries, the seminarians, really on behalf of the whole seminary community. It's an honor to offer a few words to give praise and thanks to God for you and for the unique gifts that are flowing through your priesthood now. There is one image, I have three words, that refract the light of Christ that flow through you, though there are many, many charisms and gifts, and these words are espousal, unity and friendship but these three special charisms or gifts that flow through you in the Holy Spirit come from within an image and the one image that I believe that I've come to know as your spiritual director that governs your life is the fiery heart of Jesus the fiery heart that's burning, burning wildly with love, with Christ's love. And so these three words from within that fiery image of love, a few simple comments. Espousal, you wear on your left hand a ring. And this is a quiet, constant reminder of being espoused to the Trinity through Mary. And we thank you for reminding each of us in our own calls to holiness how we are espoused to the Trinity through Mary. Thank you. Unity. You are called and are living a life of particularly elevated unity where through unilateral forgiveness, and through creative suffering love, in that fiery heart of love, 
your life as a priest engenders unity. I've seen this transpire at the seminary and in Jesus' youth and in the Sierra Malabar Church, but I know it is for believers and unbelievers alike. As the priest who just spoke mentioned, I was drawn to that for the lost sheep and for all who don't yet know the name of Jesus. Your life engenders unity, friendship. People tell me that I look young for my age, and I suppose I do, but I am aging, and I am old now, and I have experienced in friendship with Christ through your heart, as does the whole seminary and the whole church, the fountain of youth that Ponce de Leon was looking for when he first came to Florida. We found it in friendship through Christ, through your fiery heart. I thank you for that friendship, not only for myself, but for the whole church. May God seal these gifts and strengthen them. And we thank and praise God for the ways in which we've yet to see how a spousal unity and friendship will bless us through your fiery heart, Christ's heart. Amen. Thank you, Father John Hahn. I think the Holy Spirit always wanted you to speak whenever he wants to share the wisdom. Thank you. And we all know that um, personal accompaniment and pastoral experience makes a priest a gentle person. So now we will listen to our video message, Reverend Father Thomas Sarail, the priest in charge of the clergy and seminarians in Jesus' youth, Reverend Father Matthew Punchil, the vicar of Divine Mercy Siramarbar Church, Edinburgh, the home parish of Father Thomas, Reverend Father John C. Tachara, pastor of Our Lady of Help, Sierra Marbar Church, Coral Springs, where Father Thomas was doing pastoral ministry. I'm so happy and appreciative to have Deacon Timmy in this parish of Our Lady of Help, Sierra Marbar Foreign Church in Florida, doing his diaconate ministry. It has become truly a blessing to this parish and more specifically to the youth and younger kids. I'm so confident and convinced that he's going to be a great gift for the church in America and more especially to Sierra Malabar Church. On behalf of this parish, all the blessings and greetings to Deacon Timmy. May God bless you. I'm sure that through Timmy, not only this parish, but the whole church, especially the youth, will be blessed. God bless. Your Excellencies, Bishop Jacob Angadiath, Bishop Joey Alapart, dear Reverend Fathers, Sisters, dear Jesus Youth of America, Reverend Father Thomas Pulikil, whom I call dearly Timmy, Joseph and Tessie, his parents, Marina and Teresa, Timmy's sisters, and all who listen to me. Greetings of peace and love to all of you. Today, my heart overwhelms with joy and gratitude. Gratitude, first of all, to Almighty God for the marvelous things He has done in Timmy, in Jesus' youth, and in the church at large. And gratitude also to Timmy for daring to accept the call of the Lord. And gratitude to his parents for conceding to offer their only son for the service of the Lord and the church. My memories today go back to over two decades. The, towards the end of the 1990s when I reached the United States. I used to go to this house near West Orange in New Jersey for prayer meetings because Joe and Tessie were very active in charismatic movement. And during the prayer meetings, I saw a little boy sitting at the corner of the church, sorry, the, the house, and uh, or sometimes going into his room and doing his business. But when the group began to sing the hymns, he would come and play the drums because he was very good at drums. Then slowly, Timmy grew into teenagers, 
and uh, young adulthood when he used to come with his sisters for the Jesus Youth programs. And the particular event that I remember is uh, the DTPs, the discipleship training programs we used to conduct in some houses every month or the other months. Timmy used to attend it regularly. But he was very intriguing. He had many questions. He used to ask so many questions on every topic. And he would not be happy with any meager answer. He would look for correct answers and he would keep on asking until he gets the correct answer. So I liked him very much. And after some years, I left the United States for India and Timmy continued his journey with the Jesus Youth. And eventually, that mutual encounter took place. The Lord found Timmy for himself and Timmy found the Lord as his path. He decided to join the seminary and become a priest for Jesus Youth. Providentially, by that time, I was in charge of the clergy and the seminarians of Jesus Youth. And so I could accompany, I could walk along with Timmy in his priestly formation, though from afar. And today, Timmy is ascending the altar of the Lord. And I thank the Lord for that. This is the reason for the overwhelming joy, actually. To end, I recall one more event. Timmy used to ask me quite often, Father, why these people are sleeping at night so many hours? Should they not be working? Maybe if they need, they can sleep for one or two hours. The rest, they should work. That was his concept. And in fact, Timmy did not used to sleep much during the night at that time. I could not give him a correct answer for that. Now years have gone by. I think by now Timmy must have got a clear answer for that question. And Timmy, now I tell you that you are going to have more sleepless nights now. As we read in uh, the book of uh, Jeremiah 3.15, where the Lord promises, I will give them praise after my heart to lead the people with wisdom and knowledge. And today, Timmy is one such, a priest to lead his people in wisdom and knowledge. Dear Timmy, dear Father Thomas Pulikil, tu es sacedos in eternum secundum ordinem Melchizedek. Congratulations, stay blessed, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, dear fathers. A priest is always born into a community of priests where he thrives. So may I invite now with our own Father Thomas Mulavanal, the Sinjalus of our diocese representing the Presbyterian. Excellency, Marjek Bangadiet, Marjoy Alapat, Reverend Father Thomas Kadupalil, Brigadier General, our newly ordained priest, Reverend Father Thomas Polikal, respected fathers, dear parents and relatives of Father Thomas Polikal, and friends. I'm very honored and delighted to express my greetings, wishes, and prayers on behalf of the clergy and the entire faithful of the Sura Malabar Diocese of Chicago and the Global Fellowship of the Jesus Youth to our newly ordained brother priest, Thomas Pulikel. I'm very happy to welcome you to the priestly koinonia the Priest Fellowship. Dear Timiacha, we the entire faithful of the diocese rejoice and praise God for this gratuitous gift by making you to be a priest of Christ. By receiving sacred ordination, 
you are elevated as a mediator between God and men. By ordaining you to the ministerial priesthood, Jesus authorized you to proclaim his good news, celebrate the sacred mysteries, and to continue his prophetic, priestly, and kingly mission on earth. I'm not sparing time to speak to you about how great the sacrament of priesthood is, because I know that you have sufficient understanding of it. Your the theological knowledge, prayer life, committed ministry with Jesus' youth, and your dedication to the Lord and his church will definitely help you to do the priestly responsibilities and the mission you are undertaking today. On this sacred occasion, I wanted to thank Purikal family, especially your parents, for leading you to the priesthood by their solid spiritual life and prayers. They are the living example, seed and maneuver of your vocation. This is indeed a proud moment in their life. And we pray that may God continue to bless your family abundantly, adjoining with each Eucharistic celebration you are going to offer to God daily. As an elder priest, I want to tell you, Timmy, that please never become disappointed at the many temptations and harsh difficulties you may face during your service in the church. I can assure you that the Satan will fight you just as he fights anyone who proclaims and strives for the continu continuation of Jesus' ministry in the world. However, you should never be afraid because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. In every obstacle you may find on your way, you must repeat what is written in the Psalms, O oh Lord, your hand shall lead me. And Jesus will lead you with his all-powerful hand in every step you take. Cast your care upon the Lord, and he shall support you. On behalf of our beloved bishops, clergy, and the faithful of our church, I offer our prayers and support in your priestly ministry. Be a saintly priest and sanctify all souls. God is going to entrust you. Welcome, brother, to our priestly koinonia. May the good Lord who called you be with you. Congratulations. Thank you, Father Thomas. We all know that a holy priest is not just the product of a seminary alone. The seeds of priesthood is planted, protected, and nurtured by the vigilant care, affectionate care of men and women who take the call to holiness seriously. So I'm very pleased to invite Mr. Sunil Nadarajan, a member of the formation team of Jesus Youth Seminarians, to address us. Sunil, welcome. Your ex Excellencies, dear fathers, sisters, and my friends. Wow, what joy we have here today. <laughs> I want to congratulate Father Thomas on behalf of the GCSU team for priests and seminarians. Father Thomas is a friend, a brother. More than this, someone I look up to receive my formation in Jesus. I remember my memories go back to, goes back to November one month in 2008. Every day for a month, 
we studied, prayed, reflected around the book Jesus of Nazareth of Pope Benedict. We both were captivated, transformed by the deep encounter of person of Christ. And I always notice he has a single-minded focus on receiving love and truth from Jesus Christ and loving the church. So on this years of accompanying him in the priestly, the formation towards priesthood, there are two realities become so concrete with such a certitude by seeing what the Lord is doing in his life. One, the priesthood is not instituted by a human authority. Rather, it is by Jesus who invites his beloved to live his priesthood in persona Christi. Second, church is not a mere human structure. Rather, it is his bride and his body and our mother. Isaiah 62, 5 says, You will be called my delight. In her, the land will be exposed. As a young man marries a virgin, your sons will marry you. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, your God rejoices over you. Dear Father Thomas, spirit and bride invades. Come. Thank you, Your Excellencies, Lord and Fathers and Ladies, for your beautiful message. For Thomas, now we want to hear from you. Welcome. Your Excellencies, dear priests, sisters, family and friends, it is with a grateful heart that I stand here today. Gratitude is the best way that I can describe the overwhelming feeling of knowing well my own unworthiness and yet experiencing the infinite mercy of God, of knowing my own limitations, but also knowing the kindness of countless souls who have carried me on their shoulders of encouragement, prayers, and friendship over the years. I'd like to begin by thanking my family. My father is a man blessed with an indescribable goodness. You meet him and you just know he's a good man. When I first told my dad that I was going to pursue the vocation to the priesthood, the very first conversation, without missing a beat, he said in similar words, well, you're not a boy who doesn't understand the nature of the sacrifices that priesthood will involve. You're a grown man, and if you feel that that's what you're called to do, then go for it. That was said like a true father. Thank you, Dad. My mom, being this boundless force of love, has smothered me with love from the day I was born. And every time I go home, she continues to spoil me with every kind of affection. Mom, you first taught me that divine principle that a person is not loved for what they do, but for who they are. Thank you. My older sister Marina, when she was just 18 years old, was so passionate to win me over for Jesus that she begged God on her knees with tears of intercession every night until her prayers prevailed. My younger sister Teresa has been this constant encouraging presence in my life affirming the unique values, gifts, and sense of calling that she perceives in me. Thank you to both of you. Thank you to my brother-in-laws, Vinod Chardin and Joe, for being brothers to me, and my nephews, Joachim, Joseph, Nathaniel, and Luke, and to my niece, Emma, for being the joys of my life. 
I'd like to thank my bishop. Of all the titles that would be appropriate to him, His Excellency Mar Jacob Angariath, Bishop of the St. Thomas Cyril Malabar Diocese of Chicago, the title I always most prefer is simply my bishop. He's been my bishop since I was 15. When I was in high school, I would look at him with eyes of faith, knowing and believing that the successor to the apostles was in our midst. And now after all these years of theological training and learning and life experience, that sense of wonder has only increased. He was never a distant figure to me. He would make the time to listen to me in one-on-one -on -one meetings, to my thoughts and convictions, and he would respond with advice that was always deeply pastoral. Bishop Jacob, 19 years later, to be ordained a priest by you is an incredible gift. Thank you. Bishop Marjoy Alapat, our auxiliary bishop, has been connected to my family since our days back in New Jersey together. And last year, he flew to McAllen to ordain me a deacon, a day that I will never forget. But Bishop has also been such a strong supporter of the Jesus Youth Movement, as we heard in his homily today, encouraging us, strengthening us, strengthening us. and how can a movement like Jesus Youth grow without the support of such pastors like Bishop Joy? I especially thank him for participating in the bishop's consultation meeting in Dubai last year. Bishop Joy, thank you. Next, I'd like to thank Major Archbishop Cardinal George Allencherry. When I met Cardinal in 2012, he asked me about my inspirations and convictions, and he listened to me as a good father would, and he gave me a powerful challenge. After listening to everything he said, you must be a great reformer in the church, like St. Francis of Assisi. I was blown away and touched by those words, and I took them to, pr to prayer over these years, even recently. Thank you, Cardinal Allengeri. I'd also like to thank Bishop Mar Raphael Tatil, Bishop of the Sir Malabar Eparchy of Shamshabad and the Ecclesiastical Advisor to Jesus Youth. Bishop Joy has such a pastoral heart and encouraging presence, as we all just heard, and he even took the time to make sure to find my phone number and send me numerous messages over WhatsApp, just of encouragement and prayers and offering penances for me. Bishop Tuttle, thank you for being a genuine witness to the gospel and an example of holiness and love. As a seminarian studying for the diocese and for Jesus' youth, Father Vinod Maritivarambo, George, was the priest who oversaw my formation. He did that excellent, excellently, but he did so much more. Observing the way he lives out his priesthood has inspired not only me, but countless other young people in our diocese. He showed me by his way of life that a priest is not to be distant or overbearing, but kind, compassionate, and wise. I can go on for a long time talking about what I have received from the Lord through Father Vinod maybe even for a whole day. But in short, let me say this. Father Vinod, you are the reason that I'm a Sarah Malabar priest today. Not through your words, but through your example. You've shown me and so many others that our Sarah Malabar tradition of faith is actually relevant in this land and in this culture. You've modeled what it means to be a priest and a leader. Thank you. I'd like to thank Father Thomas Taril, Father Tariel, as you heard, was in, Jer in New Jersey during my teenage years, and he played a key role in the initial years of my faith formation, especially leading me deeper into the richness of the church. I thank the lay coordinator of the same team, Mr. Manoj Sunny, who has accompanied me through all these years. I thank Mr. Sunil Nadarajan, a member of the same team, but also, as you heard, a very close friend and I thank his whole family, who are all very close to me. I thank Jilu Chengat, national coordinator, a phenomenal leader, and an even more phenomenal friend to me. Thank you to all the Jesus Youth leaders who made it possible for me to become a priest for the movement through your dedication. Along these lines, to all the benefactors in Jesus Youth who have financed my years of formation, most of whom are ordinary families and working people, 
Thank you. Next, there are three vicars and three parishes that I'd like to thank in a special way. First is my own family's pastor, Father Matthew Punjil, the vicar of the Divine Mercy Parish. I was very much looking forward to having Father present here because 34 years ago he was present at my baptism. But we all thought it best to keep him safe during these times. Father Punjil, I know how much you wanted to be here. I thank you for your prayers and for all your support. And to the Divine Mercy Parish, how can I thank you enough? The adorations, prayers of intercession, rosaries, Divine Mercy chaplets that you have offered for me are innumerable. Thank you. I also thank you very specially for the beautiful chalice that you gifted me with, which I use today. I'd like to thank Father Johnsty, Tachara, and Our Lady of Health in Coral Springs, where I served as a deacon this past year. Father Johnsty is a priest whose eyes are fixed on Jesus, whose heart is aflame with the zeal for the gospel. When I started there, he treated me as a younger brother and friend and encouraged me to just focus on the work of evangelization. I absolutely loved working with him this entire last year. Father, I know you would have loved to be here too. And I know you're accompanying me with your prayers. Thank you for your mentorship and example. Thank you to the sisters, the parish leaders, the CCD teachers, my graduating CCD students, and to the quarantine wisdom group. Thank you for a wonderful year. I'd like to thank the vicar and parish that is at the very center of our diocese. Father Thomas Kardigoparlil, also the vicar general of our diocese, and this Marthoma Slija Cathedral. I've known Thomas Sutton for many years. I believe we first met very soon after he arrived to this diocese when he immediately came to help out with a retreat in Rockford. We had many blessed interactions during his time in New Jersey. And during these difficult times, he's taken the challenge of hosting two priestly ordinations while having to manage all the legal and safety-related issues all throughout. Thank you, Tom Sutton. And thank you to this parish, to Father Kevin and Father Tom. Thank you, Sister Linda and Sister Metsy, for your tireless work these last weeks in decorating the church and taking care of all the details. And thank you for your friendship over the years. Thank you to the trustees, sacristans, and other leaders of this community for your generosity in making this day possible. I'd like to thank the other members of our diocesan curia, Father Thomas Mullivanal, the Vicar General of our diocese, especially for the kind words of support and prayers that you offered to me over the phone as I was preparing and for your message today. Father John Ikerti Pulisheri, the Chancellor, I thank you for being as an older brother to me, for your sincere encouragement and also your promptness in correspondences. Father George Malekel, the procurator of our diocese, I thank you for your lightheartedness and good sense of humor, for always making me feel welcome, natural, and at home. I'd like to thank Father Paul Chalisheri, the director of vocations and seminary formation. Paul Acha. Thank you for all the work you do for our diocesan youth apostolate, the pre-cana courses, pro-life initiatives, family apostolate, vocation promotion, and beyond. On a personal note, I also thank you for taking me with you to see the beautiful devotion of your home, Archdiocese of Thrissur, which was a memorable experience for me. Thank you. All the members of the presbyterate of our diocese, thank you for your steadfast and never tiring work for the people of our diocese. Though I don't mention each by name, I thank those priests in particular who at different periods of my life strengthened and inspired me. A special mention, I'd like to thank my brother priests who are ordained in and for this diocese. Father Kevin, I believe we've known each other the longest, way back before either of us had plans of becoming a priest. And ever since you were assigned as a priest here, Every time I'd come to visit my sister, you were always so relatable and hospitable. Thank you. And then in 2006, Father Rajiv and I met each other at a retreat in Miami, also way before we had plans for priesthood. And this last year in particular, Father Rajiv, you have been extremely helpful to me, going out of your way to send me books and answering my questions bearing patient, patiently with what might be called a certain lack of motivation for recording promotional videos. Thank you. 
Lastly, Father Melvin, we met right at the beginning of your seminary formation when you moved to Chicago. And now here we are as brother priests, servants of Christ. Father Melvin, I have always known you to be a man with a good heart, a sincere, earnest, and a pure heart. And now you're a priest, and it's such a blessing for the world. I'd like to thank the two Jesus Youth Priests who were ordained before me, Father Vignan Das and Father Ditto Devasi, who were truly pioneers on this path of Jesus Youth Priesthood. Being the first is always the hardest, and you've made it easy for me and for the rest of us. I thank you for your dedication and service to the movement. During my time of formation, the single greatest factor in my growth and transformation was having spiritual direction with Father John Horn. Father Horn has walked with me patiently and always guided me by the Holy Spirit into all the areas of my heart and soul that the Lord desired to touch and heal. I cannot thank God enough for having sent me a holy priest, a good man, a true friend, who could wisely and gently guide my soul deeper in a Trinity's love. Father Horn, the problem is nothing I could say would ever suffice. There are some people in life who just know you, who trust you, who build you up. That's you. I thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Monsignor David Toops, the rector of my seminary, an exceptional and magnanimous leader. From the beginning of my time at St. Vincent's, he saw gifts in me that I could not see, and I thank him for his mentorship and trust in me. I also thank Father Alfredo Hernandez, the vice rector, and a friend, and all the other priests, faculty, staff, my graduating class, and the students at the seminary. To all my friends, especially in Jesus' youth, who at the various stages of my life over the last 20 years have led me to Christ and mold me, molded me and shaped me into who I am today, I thank you. To my closest friends who know me completely and who still put up with me, who have provided a safe haven for my soul, who have built me up and strengthened me and given me the freedom to be myself, I cannot possibly thank you enough. To all my extended family, my cousins, uncles, and aunts on the Pulikul and Patara sides of the family, for the countless prayers, my heart is really overwhelmed with gratitude to you. This comes from your generosity and your faith. And many of you would have went to great lengths to be here today, and I wish we could have been together, but I thank you for your love and support. I'd like to thank the people who made this day possible, the organizing team under the leadership of Father Vinod, there's certainly too many people to mention, but Jos Jacob and Sony Tevlakar in particular have put in countless hours into organizing every single detail of this program over the last several months and dealing with all kinds of changes due to the pandemic. Thank you both. It's not just the amount of work that inspires me, but also the humility with which you did it all, never looking for anything for yourself, but only glory to God. You're an example of Christian service. I'd like to thank Mr. Hector Lewis. All of the hymns that were used today were newly composed thanks to his hard work and creative genius. But he also did it all being guided by the Holy Spirit. He spoke to me about how he was lifted up by the Spirit as he composed some of the hymns. In my mind, this is what we call the living tradition of the church. I also know he did it with great love for me personally. I thank you, Hector Cerda and your family. Our choir has spent a lot of time learning these new songs, and they were also co-composers of the music. And because of their music, I was really able to enter into this liturgy so solemnly. Princey Abraham, Johnny Abraham, Amala Abraham, they're not all related, uh, Hema Bijoy and Brother Joseph Steger have all been in a musical boot camp for the last week, toiling away at every detail to make this occasion special. Thank you so much. And um, as was mentioned, there was a phenomenal team who worked on the translations of the hymns. They consulted various people and sources, factored in the literal meanings and poetic forms. In short, they did an outstanding job. Marita Matthew led the initiative with tremendous passion and she coordinated the choir as well. 
and she worked with Dr. Manoj Abraham and Chris Camerata. Thank you. Thanks to Subdeacon Joby Joseph, did a great job incensing me. Brother George and Brother Matthew Jacob for serving today. You guys are a lot of fun to be around. On the media front, I'd like to thank all those who worked behind the several videos that were made. I cannot imagine the hours of work that went into it. And I'd very specially like to thank Shalom Media for live streaming this whole event. Shalom has been in contact with me over the last several months planning for this day and making all the preparations well in advance. Everything they do is a ministry. They do it for the glory of God and for the building up of the church. I thank the Lord for their generous spirits. Lastly, thanks to all of you who joined along in this litur liturgy through live streaming and your prayers. Blessings to all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was hard talking to heart. Thank you, Father Thomas. And we all know that um, every movement, every beautiful fruit, that's in effect of committed work of so many leaders in our community, especially in Jesus Youth. So now I invite Jilu Changa to the National Coordinator of Jesus Youth USA to guide us hereafter. Welcome, Jilu. Hello, everyone. As a concluding portion of this day's ceremony, I'd like to give some gifts. So I'd like to just acknowledge a few people um, that have been so much a part of this journey to priesthood, especially for the newly ordained Father Thomas, and been a special part of, of the movement as well. So Georgie Malio will be representing um, the movement and giving an icon of the Sacred Heart to His Excellency Bishop Mar Jacob Angadieth. Your Excellency, we are so grateful for your Christ-like heart, the sacred heart of Christ that is in you, that has given so much love to us in the movement. Thank you for your love. Next, I would like to invite Sharon Alexander to give an icon of the resurrected Christ to His Excellency Bishop Marjoy Alapat. Bishop Joy, we thank you for your love and your kind words of affirmation uh, during your homily for the movement. And we pray that this icon be a reminder of the new life that we are all called to. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Sony Tevalakara to give an icon of the Last Supper to Father Thomas Karagabalil on behalf of the cathedral and all the brother priests, new brother priests of Father Thomas. Thank you, Thomas Acha, for all that you've done in these past few days to make this day possible and to allow it to go smoothly. Next, I'd like to invite Sindhu Narajan to give an icon of the Good Shepherd to Father John Horn. Father Horn uh, mentioned sheep in his message, and it's appropriate because he has been such a shepherd to Father Thomas and to the whole movement in the past few years. So thank you, Father Horn. Next, I would like to invite seminarian Joseph Steger to give an icon of St. Francis to our national chaplain of Jesus Youth, Father Vinod. Father Vinod is, as I said, our national pastor, and um, he's been so instrumental to allowing this state to happen and the journey of priesthood. So St. Francis is the patron saint of Jesus Youth, and uh, Father Vinod, we hope that this is a reminder of how much the movement loves you. <laughs> He said he shall try to be the donkey. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite Jose Jacob to present an icon of the Holy Family to Father Thomas's parents, Jose and Tessie Pullicle. Thank you for the gift of your son to the church and to the movement, and we pray that you may be blessed just as the Holy Family.
Last, I would like to invite Remya Joseph to present some gifts to our newly ordained Father Thomas. That's you. <laughs> so we have an icon for Father Thomas. It's an icon of Christ the High Priest. Um, and we hope that this icon is a daily reminder of the beautiful vocation to which he is called. In addition, we'd like to give him a, a beautiful box, but it's not just a box. It is engraved with his name and today's date, and also we love because he first loved us, the verse on top. Uh, and inside the box is uh, filled with many messages from people, from family, from friends, from the Jesus Youth Movement, uh, messages of encouragement and moments of grace in which they experience the grace from Father Thomas's love. Uh, it also has a little spiritual bouquet of the many prayers that um, have been going into not only his journey, but allowing this day possible. So uh, we want to gift this to you as a reminder of your love um, and our love for the movement. <laughs> on that note I would like to conclude all the, the ceremony for today and I just want to bring our attention to the words that we were reminded of several times throughout the ceremony from the first Konana where it says how eminent O priest is this role today you have undertaken Today, we have witnessed a beautiful undertaking, and I'm sure that many of us, all that us present and all of us watching online, have witnessed the blessing and experienced the blessing of this undertaking. Let us continue to pray for Father Thomas Pullicle as he continues his journey to holiness and he begins his priestly ministry. Thank you. United States of America. Grounded in the conviction that all are endowed by their creator. To life, liberty, and the free expression of faith. A melting pot with immigrants and missionaries from across the globe. This nation has stood on the foundation of its Christian faith, announcing, in God we trust. Shalom World, a commercial-free, vibrant, global Catholic television channel. Produces family-centered, faith-based programs from all across the United States, Australia, Canada, Ireland, United Kingdom, and many other countries. Making it possible for work evangelization to go worldwide. High definition, 24-7 broadcasting. Shalom World promotes life, beauty, conversions, change my heart. vocations, God calls us to this eternal banquet, devotions, and miracles. Embraced by congregations, endorsed by bishops, new dawn in the media culture with the power to transform the life culture. Change what you watch and watch the world change. Shalom.